Are you looking to take your personal finances to the next level? You're in the right place. Welcome to the Monday Money Tip Podcast, presented by I Was Broke, Now I'm Not, with your host, Joseph Sangle. Well, welcome to the Monday Money Tip Podcast, presented by Fully Funded Life. My name is Joe Sangle, and we are always fired up to help you, yes, you, live a fully funded life. Today, I'm so excited to be joined uh, by a member of our team, Whitney Purcell, still standing in for my regular co-host, Megan Hibbard, who's going to be back, we think, very soon uh, from having twins. And so we're super excited uh, to be able to continue on this Monday Money Tip podcast with Whitney. Whitney, tell everybody, you know, briefly about what you do here uh, with Fully Funded Life and our team, and then we'll dive into the session today. Awesome. Yeah. Um, if you've listened to a couple of the episodes, I've jumped in and shared a little bit about I'm the integration coordinator for Enjoy Stewardship Solutions. And basically what that is, is I am helping the company um, switch from being a house of brands, if you're a marketing person, to a branded house. But basically what that I'm trying to help make sure that all of our solutions play well together and that we are looking at how to help churches and pastors in their overall financial journey. So on this podcast, we're really emphasizing personal finance, but our company as a whole serves churches with all different stewardship needs, whether it's capital campaigns, annual giving, online giving, plan giving. So what we're trying to do is help churches look at this comprehensive set of solutions that will help them with their financial needs and how we can come alongside and partner with those churches. So it's my job to work with all our different and put in processes and procedures, all the people hate to, <laughs> to implement, but are really scary, um, and get these projects rolling to make sure that all of our solutions are integrated well. So that's a little yeah. bit of what- That's yeah. awesome. So Whitney does a lot. Uh, tell everybody what episode number this is. This is episode number 219. That's right, 219. Uh, Mondays coming to you with helpful right now, relevant information to help you advance in your life towards your plans, hopes, and dreams. Uh, It is the first uh, Monday of what I would call fully in season. Like last Monday was Labor Day in the United States. Now we're fully rolling uh, into, we're in rhythms. Everybody's got school, if they've got kids, all that stuff. It's a really important time of year where people can get back in rhythm with their finances to tell everybody what we're going to talk about today. Yeah, today's topic is your hobbies cost too much. Ooh, oh, we're going to go there? <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> is this cause, Is this an intervention, Whitney? Are you staging an intervention for me? You know, Jen called and... No. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh, I don't know if I want to continue on this. Well, that's it for today's Monday. Monday. <laughs> no, no. Uh, no, this is, it actually probably is an intervention being staged by my bride for me and by my team, uh, but, but it is really important. We're going to talk about how your hobbies, are they costing too much? Before we do that, though, we're going to go into one of my favorite parts of the podcast. You know what that is. Let's go. Now it's time to get caught up with our current money events. The Monday Money Tip podcast is sponsored by the Fully Funded Life Membership Program. The Fully Funded Life Membership Program provides all you need to begin winning with money and live a fully funded life. Fully Funded Life includes four key components, courses, challenges, coaching, and community. Courses provide financial education. Challenges help you make massive progress in a specific money skill. Coaching is provided by the Fully Funded Life Certified Coaches through open office hours held multiple times each month. All of the courses, challenges, and coaching results in an outstanding community that help equip, motivate, and encourage you to take your next financial steps toward your fully funded life. Fully funded life, courses, challenges, coaching, community. All that's missing is you. Learn more and receive a special offer for Monday Money Tip listeners today at fullyfunded.life slash MMT. That's www.fullyfunded.life slash MMT. That's awesome. So for today's current money events section, I want to talk about the importance of caring, the importance of caring. You know, you can teach people a lot of things, but one thing that I've found that is very difficult to do is to teach people to care. I found out that they either care or they don't care. I want people to care 
about their personal finances. I want them to care about a budget. I want them to care about their plans, hopes, and dreams. Uh, but I can't make someone care. I can't wire them up to care about something. And, and the statement that I'm going to operate on in this current money event section is this. And that is, if you care, you will prepare. It rhymes if you say it right, that if you care, you will prepare. And that's really important to think about. And I always say, if you don't prepare, then prepare to repair uh, because you're going to mess some stuff up. But the fact is, it's important that you care about this stuff. And we love it. I mean, you're listening to this podcast. That tells us that you have a level of caring that a lot of people, uh, really the average person does not have. But I would also say you probably have people in your life. Maybe you have some grown children. Maybe you have a brother or sister or a dear friend that they just don't seem to care about this financial stuff. Or they maybe you have a coworker who doesn't seem to care about the work they're doing. And you can't teach caring, but it is wildly important. Because what I find is that if you care about something, it causes you to pay more attention to it. It causes you to do the difficult things, the, the learning, which we can all admit learning doesn't always feel good, nor do we want to do it because there's that awkwardness about, hey, I don't know, and I'm learning something new and leaning into learning something new. And so I just wanted to say today, uh, hey, good on you that you're listening to this podcast. Good for you that you are investing in yourself and that you care enough to invest in gaining knowledge and even hear things that might be difficult, like I'm going to hear today about the topic today that our hobbies cost too much, uh, that, that you are taking the extraordinary step of caring. And uh, we can't teach you to care. But what we can do is lean into people who do care and be able to give you the tools, the principles, the education so that you can prosper in your journey. Anything you'd like to add to that, Whitney? Well, as you were talking about that and talking about leaning into people who do care, sometimes caring is contagious because you get to see how they're benefiting from that. And I feel like if you're at that stage where you're struggling to care or do that, surround yourself with people who do care. Find a community that does, that's going to encourage you and spur you on because it does push you and understand that it may not be that you take every step possible every single day that you should be doing, but start with a next step. And, you know, that's one thing that we emphasize is it doesn't have to be everything this day immediately, but just take one step each day forward. So don't get overwhelmed with it. Just um, like I said, surround yourself with people that do care and take a step forward. That's awesome. So I think as an action step coming out of it is to think about the people you've surrounded yourself with, the people that you're spending time with. Uh, do they have the same level of care? And if they don't, or for whatever reason they choose to continue to operate in financial dysfunction, we're not saying say goodbye to those friends, but we are saying it's time to expand your friend's pool and be able to add some people in your life who are passionate about this, who do care about this, so that you can have conversations with them without people looking at you weirdly. Because let me tell you, those who don't care, if you start talking about how awesome your budget is and how you went on this spending fast recently, uh, you're going to get some strange looks and they're just not going to get it. And you're not going to feel like, hey, that, that they're catching what you're trying to hand to them. So make sure that you have a people group that is moving forward in this area that do care about it. That's awesome. So that's it for today's current money events section. So what's our next part of the podcast we're going to cover today, Whitney? Yes, our next part is our success story. And we always talk about how this podcast is powered by your success because this is why we do this. We want to hear you winning with your money, moving forward, making those steps and um, experiencing financial freedom. So today's success story comes from Chris, who is moving toward debt freedom even faster than he thought possible. Chris says, my original debt freedom date was 33 months. I have since gotten rid of all of my credit cards. I also sold my house and moved into a house half the size that fits my family, family perfectly. Before I started tithing, my family was living paycheck to paycheck. Now, 
that we have started tithing and budgeting, we seem to have be so much more stable financially. We were $32,000 in debt and will be completely debt-free by Christmas, which is less than 12 months to become debt-free. Thanks for all the great tips to becoming debt-free. I look forward to making the phone call to tell you that I am debt-free. Wow. Yeah. Awesome. I'd say the podcast has fully fueled up now and powered yes. up. That's awesome. I, You know, as you read that, I love hearing some different ways that people phrase things. You know, we don't get to meet a lot of the people uh, yeah. who are writing us. And so we can't hear the tone in which they're saying things. So, and they say that 90% of communication is nonverbal. So mm -hmm. we're having to operate on the 10%. So we have to really pay attention to how people say things, how they write things. And what I sense just in the way they had written it is almost an unbridled joy and enthusiasm for this progress that they're making and almost a state of awe that they're able to achieve it so much more rapidly than they initially thought. You know, got rid of all credit cards. That is extreme behavior. Sold their house and downsized. How many people do you know that really downsized? And they yeah. started giving. And all three of those things, you know, in and of themselves is a massive decision. Like if all of our listeners made one of those decisions, they started giving, they sold their house, downsized, or yeah. got rid of all their credit cards. Any one of those is massive. You put all three of them together, well, you beat your debt freedom date goal by two thirds. Instead of three years, one year. Exactly. That's such a good point where it's like, they got serious about it. They saw that 33 months, which is really like some people may say, oh, that's great. But they saw that and went after it, you know, with <laughs> ferociousness. <laughs> like, <laughs> I think Chris but, cared a lot. Yes. <laughs> and as a result, he chose to prepare. The caring, yes. that that inner drive, yeah. that will force you to prepare. It, it won't even be having to make yourself do it anymore. It's like, I am compelled to do it. Man, yeah. I am fired up that Chris sent us that. That really fires me up. This podcast is fueled up <laughs> and able to power through today. That's awesome. Well, next, we're going to talk a little bit about our actual topic. So we're going to jump right in. Um, and today, we're talking about our hobbies. And are they costing us too much? <laughs> So I'll let you kick that off. <laughs> well, this is, well, I, I, be, I, I do really believe that my team has staged an intervention <laughs> on behalf of my bride. I really do believe that. Um, I like any outdoor activity and it pretty quickly becomes a hobby. But be, before I go out and find out who initiated this and whose idea it was for this for me, I thought it'd be good for each of us to kind of share some of our hobbies. So yeah. Whitney, what are some of the hobbies that you enjoy? Um, well, we're coming out of summer months right now, and I love going to the lake and boating and kayaking and sea doing and those things. So that can be really expensive too. Um, but that's one of the things that I love to do in the summer. So, mm. yep. That's awesome. So I, I have a lot of hobbies and I also like going to the lake, but I like I like fishing uh, and I also do like skiing. Uh, my kids really enjoyed being pulled around on the tube. Uh, I also yeah. enjoy hunting, fishing, trapping, hiking, running, running races. Um, I, I like all that stuff. And so I, I would think it'd be awesome if our friends watching, maybe you're watching on YouTube, uh, you could list maybe some of your hobbies that you enjoy a lot. That'd be really good because all these hobbies, they come at a cost. Mm -hmm. And I think we need to state some facts. What are some facts that we should say about hobbies, Whitney? What are some facts that we could share? Well, I mean, I think facts like hobbies are something that bring us joy. They're something that we love. So, yeah, they're awesome. Yeah. Hobbies are awesome. Like when you think about going to the water, what, what does that what does that do for you? What does it, that do for your soul? 
it immediately kind of has this like calming, relaxing effect. Like if I know I get to get out on the water and like get my kids in the kayak and we get to go and like kayak around or even just like I'm the person that I can go and sit on the boat and like the boat can be going and just the wind in my hair, like it is my happy place. Like, uh, and I shared this this summer, it was like when we went to um, on our trip for all staff, when we were down at the beach. I'm like, if I can have my feet in the sand or be on a boat, like that is my happy place. <laughs> yeah, and it should be noted, uh, we celebrated uh, Enjoy Stewardship Solutions, which you mentioned that you're integrating all of our solutions. Uh, it was founded 30 years ago, about this month. And so we took the whole team to West Palm Beach, where the founder of this organization lives today. And we were able to have this great moment. And we did have a catamaran ride up yep. and down the intercoastal waterway between West Palm Beach and Palm Beach. And it should be noted that if you look at the pictures, Whitney immediately somehow lost her shoes and was sitting at the front of the catamaran. And everybody was like, she's in her happy place. This is awesome. <laughs> yep. So the ho hobbies are awesome. I think we should all acknowledge that. Before we go and say how bad they are financially or what they cost you, I, I want to throw this in for whoever's doing an intervention for me and maybe an intervention for a lot of our listeners to say that hobbies are awesome. They provide separation for, from work. Uh, a lot of times uh, hobbies are something that's isolated, uh, like people that go hiking solo uh, when I am hunting. Uh, a lot of times I'm sitting solo and I like watching the woods wake up. I like watching it go to sleep. Uh, it allows reflection time. Uh, when you're out uh, a lot of times with a hobby that requires a lot of focus, I know people that paint, uh, people that do hobbies like that, it allows them to really get focused. It actually allows you to get rid of maybe your daily work or the things that bring stress to your life. And so it's been said a lot of times when people are workaholics that that they need to go get a life. Have you ever heard somebody say that yeah. to someone, Whitney? You need to get a life. Like yeah. all you like, even when they go to a party, all they're doing is talking about work. And yeah. and it's like, hey, you you really need to get a life. What are they really saying? They're saying you need something that is separating, yeah, that allows you to operate differently. I heard one person say, Whitney, that. If your daily work is thinking, it requires thinking like it's a thinking job, yeah. then your hobby should be something that requires physical stuff. That's and if your daily work is physical, then maybe your hobby should be like stuff that exercises the brain, like reading or researching yeah. stuff. It's pretty That's interesting. That is interesting because that kind of aligns with like, Mine is all day thinking and doing that. And then the thing that I like the most is just to unplug and unwind there. Yeah. So, so uh, hobbies, but even though hobbies are awesome, they can also rob you of your plans, hopes, and dreams. Yeah. So, you know, it's very important that we think about this. When we're thinking about hobbies, we're thinking about the things that we do outside of work. You know, we think about, does that help move us towards our plans, hopes, and dreams? Or have they become so huge in our life they actually rob us of our plans, hopes, and dreams? Yeah. And I know sometimes like, let's say like some of your plans, hopes, and dreams are to travel and to do that. So there can be things where, you know, because you enjoy traveling and you're doing that, maybe you're trying to do lots of little mini staycations or you're going out and trying new things all the time. And that's great stuff that you also have to look at the cost benefit. And I think that's kind of what we're hitting on today is look at your overall big plans, hopes, and dreams and kind of find a balance. So, yeah, yeah. Here's, here's the thing that I think we should say, Whitney, to everybody who's <laughs> listening today is hobbies are awesome, but they can also rob you of your plans, hopes, and dreams. And I would challenge every listener to ask themselves the question is, is the hobby or the hobbies that you're involved in, are they, are they at the expense of achieving more important plans, hopes, and dreams? And this is why with the fully funded life ladder, the very first rung is 
it's a seemingly non-financial thing. And that is to write down your plans, hopes, and dreams. Yeah. Because if you don't write them down, it doesn't mean you don't have plans, hopes, and dreams. But when you're doing this, this assessment of, hey, this, this hobby, which was a plan, hope, and dream, hey, is it robbing me of other plans, hopes, and dreams? Now, has it become an outsized portion of my life? And so if you don't have them written down, you can't really see that. Writing it down allows you to see it. Yeah, that's so true. Like as you were talking, so one of the other things I love doing is decorating. Um, and that can quickly like add up if you're not careful. And I am a budget decorator. Like I love home goods and Marshalls where it's like, okay, I can get a great deal. I can scour and do that. But you can only have so many great deals before it starts to like really like ching, ching, ching kind of a thing. And what I don't want to do is sit and let my hobby of wanting to, you know, decorate and have something nice rob me of bigger future plans moving forward. So, yeah, so I, I think we should think about hobbies. And one of the things I've seen is, uh, I, is in my life, this is my life, being real with my life. My hobbies seem to cost more than Jen Sangle's hobbies. Mm -hmm. Like she likes scrapbooking and scrapbooking is amazing. It's where she cuts out pictures. She prints out pictures like it's the 1990s. And then she cuts them up and makes these really cool books of our kids, you know, each phase of their life. And they're really amazing mementos. And I remember she was like, uh, you know, I would really like to get a cricket for Christmas. And if anybody's listening who's done this stuff and knows what a cricket is, it's not spelled like the thing that makes sound in the in the grass. It's I think it's spelled C R I C U T, yeah. like cry cut, but they pronounce it cricket. And I, I don't know what it costs, three or four hundred bucks. And I'm like, three or four hundred bucks. And then she reminded me that the John Deere tractor costs, you know, about 20 or 30 times that. And it's <laughs> right. like, now, now that's not fair. Now I need that for working on the farm. And she's like, well, I need this for scrapbooking. So how much money is the farm making us? And then she re reminded me. So this is a really good statement. If you have something that you say is a business, but it makes no money or cost you money, it's actually a hobby. There we right? go. So that's it's really important. I think this is a really important statement. So I do farming. But my farming so far has, has lost me money. <laughs> now, now I'm getting ready to harvest some trees. It's going to make some money. But the bottom line is that, that sometimes hobbies are outsized costs. And you want to ask yourself the question, is it worth it? Yeah. Is it really worth it? And so if you're watching on YouTube today, I thought I would just show you a tool that connects to this. And uh, you can see this here, right, Whitney? So that everybody can yes, see it. Can. This is at our website, I was broke, now I'm not. We'll even link in the show notes. But under our tools, we have a saving and investing page. And it actually has calculators. And one of my favorite calculators here is this investment value calculator. And so I want you to ask yourself the question, how much, how much does, are you spending on your hobby every month? Maybe you enjoy motorcycling and you have a motorcycle payment. And uh, you also are traveling nearly every weekend in the summer, and that's costing you, you know, several hundred dollars in fuel and maybe a hotel or food cost. And you look at that and say, if that money were invested instead, and you're doing this, you know, and you're spending $600 a year on it, I'm just going to say $600 a year. Mm -hmm. And you have, you're in your 40s and you have 25 years till you retire, so 300 months. And you invested $50 a month instead, 50 times 12 is $600. Well, that would be worth $66,000 in 25 years. Now, let's say that that motorcycle has a payment. I don't know what payment I just said it was. What did I say the payment is? I don't remember. I don't know. Let's say it was 250. So we'll add it. There's $300. Okay. The $50 you're spending on the gas and the fuel, food and the hotel. And then the payment. You put that in there, it's a $400,000 cost. That's for 25 years. Now, you wouldn't have that payment for 25 years, I hope. Yeah, that's true. But Unless it's really that's important to look at this and say, is your, is your hobby, 
is your habit, that thing, is it worth it? Yeah. And, and, and what I just want to say here um, to you, Whitney, to all of our listeners is it's okay for the, you to answer the question. Yes. Mm -hmm. Is it worth it? Yes. You know, you can't take this stuff with you. It great brings you great joy. It moves you closer to your plans, hopes, and dreams. But it's also okay for the answer to be no, mm -hmm. no matter how difficult that is for you. Yeah. As you saw those numbers there, Whitney, and as you thought about it, what came to your mind? Well, I think part of it too is just like looking at it and saying, okay, if there's something that I really value and is important to me in terms of my hobbies, maybe what I need to do is look at and see like, okay, can I afford it on the level that I have? So let's say you have the motorcycle, but you have the really fancy expensive motorcycle. Maybe it's time for you to find something that's like a fixer upper project that you can work on and do that. Or, you know, there's ways where if you don't have to, you don't have to break up with your hobby altogether, but yeah. you can find less expensive ways to do that. And then oh. also look at the balance of your hobbies, because maybe it's something where it's like, okay, this hobby is pretty expensive. Like if I want to go golfing, if I want to do this, like. I can do it this many times. That's what I can afford. And so it's also just understanding what you personally can afford to do because somebody else, that may be something that's out of their ballpark, but for you, it's something that you can manage. So kind of looking through and, and thinking about like, okay, if I really love this, how often can I actually, can I, and should I actually do this? And then is there a way to do this maybe for less if I can't afford to do it this way? That's awesome. So, you know, you mentioned golfing, which I thought for sure we had set a ground rule that you're not allowed to talk about golfing. <laughs> um, but somehow Whitney managed to sneak it in here. Let's talk about golfing. Let's say that you're in your thirties and you have a golf habit and you like to golf different courses. And so you're going golfing one time a week and it costs you $50 per time. Right. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you live in the South where we live. So you can golf year round. Okay. So yep. 50 times a week. And let's say you take a few weeks off. Maybe you golf 50 times. So that's $2,500. Let's take 2,500 and divide it by 12. That is a total of $208. And let's say you're, you're 35. So you have, let's say 30 years, 360 months mm -hmm. and a 10% rate of return. That golf habit is costing 470 K. Now, yeah. we didn't mention this. I didn't mention this. I want to tell all my golfers that are listening that Whitney brought this up, <laughs> even though she was scolded not to. No, I'm just joking. But I, I just want to share that because it can you can say, yes, it is worth it. But let me tell you, if you have $0 going in your investments or you're saying, I can't afford to contribute to my company 401k, and 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 it brings up another aspect of it. Like if you're saying, I can't afford to do that, that investing stuff, this stuff you know is important for long-term, yet you can fund the right now fund. Mm -hmm. And we just press in a little bit today on a Monday and say your priorities are out of whack. Yeah. And it really brings up this other aspect that there's more than just a financial cost yeah. to your hobbies. So particularly with golf, we can bring it up. What is another cost that we should bring up here today? time cost the time cost yeah so when we're looking at something like that if you're going once a week that can be your entire saturday morning even if you get up and go really early like say goodbye to half of your saturday you know kind of a thing and maybe you're blessed and you're in a job where you can go and take clients out and do that as part of your work week and so you're not having to carve out you know one of those but yeah, looking at time cost is really important. I know like we both have young kids. So like for me, when I'm looking at something, I'm trying to think about like, what is this going to take time away from spending time with them? Um, time out. So you just brought up another cost. And what is that? It's the relationship cost. Yep. So, yep. so let's, let's just rattle off those three and do some summary statements. Yes. Every hobby by nature, has a financial cost, it has a time cost, and because of those two, it has a relationship cost. Yeah. So you just mentioned we both have young children. 
So it costs you time with your children yeah. if it's away from them. Yes. And then therefore there is a relational cost. Mm -hmm. In addition to the financial cost, if you think about marriage, it comes at, if it's something not done with the spouse, it's a relational cost there. Yeah. And so it's very important. I, I really think, and as I listen to this, you know, it is very introspective for me in the midst of coming off this busy summer, in the midst of all my hobbies. I, and as we get back in rhythm coming out of Labor Day weekend, and here we are the first full week without a holiday, everything's in rhythm. I feel that, that, that moment that says it's time to reevaluate. Mm -hmm. And I think the question that I have to ask myself, and I just want to encourage everybody listening to the podcast today, is it time to say goodbye to a hobby? Is it time? Is there a hobby that you need to say goodbye to? I thought I would share a story as we kind of wrap this up. I remember uh, Jenny and I got married in 1997. Uh, we're we just celebrated 25 years. And I remember we, I quickly was moving up in the company that I was working for and it required a move. It's what brought us to South Carolina from Indiana. And for the first three months that I was here, my bride was working on her first year of teaching. So you get a temporary license until you teach your first year and then you get your permanent license. And so she had to finish out her contract and finish teaching. And so I remember she showed up here the day before our anniversary to, to be here permanently. And while she had not been here for those three months, I had really started golfing a lot two or three times a week. I had also chosen to enroll to go get my master's degree in business, which was two nights a week straight from work, 6 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. at Clemson University at night school. So I have this full-time job, which was like 60 hours a week. It was, I'm going back two classes a semester. I'm golfing two times a week. Plus I'm wanting to golf and hunt and fish all this stuff. And I remember going on this fishing trip to Canada and I'm sitting in the middle of the boat and I'm literally like, my brain is fried. It's like racing. And I was like, what is going on? And I realized in that moment, the reason that I am feeling stressed right now is I've got too many things going on. Mm. And I had gotten really good at golf for me. I was I had, I had golfed in 82, which was only 10 over par, which is really good for me. Um, I was getting good, but I sat there and I said, something has to go. And I, I said goodbye to golf. And so I, I, I think I've golfed three times this year, all yeah. of them terribly, all <laughs> of them terribly. But it was that moment where I came to a realization. I had to say goodbye to something that I loved, that I enjoyed. That was great, but literally the time cost and the relationship cost, they were, they were even greater than even the financial cost, even though that was pretty big too. Mm -hmm. And so I just want to ask every single person who's listening to the podcast today, do you have a hobby that's costing you financially? And hey, even if you can afford it financially and it's not costing you other financial goals, can you afford it time-wise? Can you afford it relationally? And that's the great questions that we wanted to ask today. Um, I'm kind of upset with my team for allowing us to talk about this. Whitney, I'll give you the last word before we wrap it up. Yeah, I just was going to say, I think this whole episode is about balance. We're not sitting and telling you cut everything out of your life that you enjoy. Uh, that's no way to live. We want you to find that, that balance there. So this is just more of the call to kind of do a little bit of digging uh, Joe and I have both had to do it for ourselves at multiple different times. So just, you know, sit down and look at it, look how much it's costing you time and financially, um, and just kind of see if there's a way to modify it, or if it's time to say goodbye to one and pair back to, you know, two or three. So we just want to encourage you. We're not telling you to get rid of all fun in your life and everything that brings you joy. We just want you to have balance. That's a great summary statement. 
it's about balance. So let's talk about the quote for today. And I'm going to, I don't know who said it first, so we'll say we said it or anonymous. Uh, and it's this, if you care, you will prepare. So let's prepare y'all. That's the best way to do it. It reminds me of Proverbs 21, five that says plans. No, I'm jumping off on Proverbs 18, 22. It says the plans of the diligent. Well, those lead to profit as surely as haste leads to poverty. So preparation, that means planning. You'll lead to profit, which means abundance in your life. Tell everybody what we're going to talk about in our next episode, in episode number 220. Yes, episode number 220 is weird ways to make money. So I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be one of those unique ones, weird ways to make money. Maybe we should have yeah. done it on Halloween, but it's going to be we weird go. ways. <laughs> Maybe it won't be spooky, but it's definitely going to be weird ways that you can make money. It should be fun. Hey, if you like today's episode, please help us get this podcast to other people who, so they can benefit too. You can do that by rating our podcast, leaving a review. That is a great way. It works in the algorithms. If you're watching on YouTube, hit the subscribe button, hit that little bell, leave a comment. What are the hobbies that you like a lot? And tell us, is there a hobby that maybe you need to consider dumping for now? Until next time, we'll see you next Monday. Hey, make sure you ponder this. Maybe this is for you. Maybe it's for someone that's in your life. You share this podcast with them. I think it'll be helpful to them. So until then, have a great week. We have a fully funded week. And we'll see you next Monday with some more helpful tips and some weird ways to make money. Get fired up, everybody. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of the Monday Money Tip Podcast. Presented by I Was Broke, Now I'm Not. If you enjoyed today's episode, please leave a review and subscribe. And for more great content and to stay up to date, visit IWBNIN.com. We'll catch you next time.